Hello everybody and welcome to my channel Getting Tidier. I wanted to start by thanking the 1,889 people that have decided to subscribe to my channel. I very much appreciate you being here and us building this community. And also to say if you're not already subscribed, that's 41% of you, it's 58% of you, please would you consider subscribing. And then lastly, I wanted to share with you uh, the split of all the different countries. So these are the top five countries that are currently watching my video on a regular basis. I did get a message to say the United Kingdom had surpassed, United States had surpassed United Kingdom. But at the moment, United Kingdom is still 43% of my views. Thank you everybody for being here, for supporting me, for all your lovely kind comments, all your lovely ideas. I really do very much appreciate the support that I've had. Um, I was talking to my sister last night at her birthday celebrations about how lovely everybody is on YouTube and kind and considerate and just so different to some other social media platforms. So thank you, I very much appreciate each and every one of you. So this video was taken yesterday Yesterday after lunch, when I decided that I couldn't bear all the things that are currently over the floor in the dining room and I needed to do some more work in that bottom section of the cabinet. I was also challenged to get rid of some more music, which is exactly what I'm doing, as you can see me sitting there going through that pile. So that pile was all the things that were going to be put back into the cabinet. I managed to sort out a few extra things that I could get rid of. I've actually got a bag of music with a couple of books and some other bits that I can get rid of, which was really, really good. Quite close to the picture, you can see my table mats. I tend to have about five, four or five mats on the table at any one time in a pile. And then I have all the spares that are in this cabinet. But to be honest, they're so far in the back because they're very difficult to get. So I want to get to a point where actually all the mats at the end of dinner, the, the plates get taken through, the, the mats get wiped, the mats get dried, and then they all get put back into the cabinet. And then if I ask somebody, can you take the mats out, can you get the mats out and get the table ready for dinner, please? So they will just go to the cabinet and get the mats out. Isn't that what everyone else does? <laughs> I'd like to do that too. Here's hoping. I also found four plates in this cabinet, which, oh no, they were underneath the cabinet. So the one thing that I've done, because of everything that I've taken out, I've got a bit more space, not maybe as much space as I wanted for the things from the kitchen cabinet. And the reason for that is because there are various things that I'd put underneath the cabinets. So I, now the only thing under the cabinet is an extension lead because there's a plug socket behind that cabinet. So that's the only thing that's now underneath. So I took out the plates, I took out some other bits and pieces. There was a heating thing for my um, greenhouse when I start my seedlings. That was behind there, so I've taken that out. So I've put everything now in, back into the cabinet. So that's quite good that, okay, yeah, I haven't got loads of space for all the things I wanted from the kitchen, but I have put other things away. And those four plates, I did toy with getting rid of them, but they're actually really nice for putting out, for putting like, say, a quiche out or a dessert. So I thought it makes sense for them to go in the cabinet with the mats. And then when people come round, I can then get them out and use them along with my Wedgwood. You can see I was talking there because I found something that was my husband's and I was asking him whether he wanted it. So I just thought I'd put that bin there. I put loads of things in the bin. The bin was full by the end of the day. Um, and like we were talking about yesterday, I'll need to go back and revisit this at a later date. And it's that like iterative circular process where I'm constantly will be going back to rooms and clearing out more and getting rid of more and being really strict and what I take into the house. And of course, the stricter you are, you don't end up with every single nook and cranny filled up with stuff. I was talking to my sister about this yesterday and I said, oh, until I, before I started doing my videos, I just thought that I was just generally untidy as opposed to having too much stuff. And she was like, oh no, I know exactly what you mean. 
it's so easy to have like you know if all the work surfaces are covered and then you've got to dust all the work surfaces compared to if they're all clear and you just wipe down the side because everything's clear I'm never going to live a minimal, minimalist lifestyle because I like my things. I like my bits and bobs, but I do appreciate that I've probably got too many bits and bobs. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my work has changed. My pattern of work has changed this week. So um, normally I would just work a few hours on a Tuesday, a few hours on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, well, I say a few hours, as you know, the last few weeks I've been doing almost sort of full time hours, really. But I've changed my my job number one, we'll call it. I work a few hours Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And this week I've changed my day. So I'm not working Thursday. I'm working today. So um, the school holidays break up on Thursday, Maundy Thursday. So we've got Thursday off, then Good Friday, Saturday, Easter Sunday, Bank Holiday Monday. And then next Thursday... We'll be going to Holland, which we're all getting very excited about. So I needed to do more on Monday because I knew I was just wasn't going to have the time to do things later on in the week. And also because it's great fun, isn't it? Taking everything out of a cupboard. That's the easy part. It's getting everything, putting everything back neatly and sorting out everything, which is the harder part. And I just knew if I didn't do more work on this on Monday... I'd have the rest of the week where I'd walk past things and look at all the things that I needed to do. So I'm quite pleased with how it's all kind of got back in there. Um, yeah, so I'm doing a longer day uh, today. So my husband is going to do the school run with my mum because my daughter always sees my mum on a Tuesday or Wednesday. And then my daughter will come back for her flute lesson. I think she will miss me at pick-up, but I have said to her... That's all so we can spend Thursday. So I don't have to do any work on Thursday. So when she knew that, she was really excited. Um, she had a lovely day with, I told you about the Easter egg hunt. She had a lovely time yesterday. And then tomorrow, they're going to be doing one of these um, sort of special celebrations for Easter, which I think will be nice. So she's looking forward to doing some different Easter activities. So my plan was to get this room back straight and sorted again by putting everything back in the cabinet that lives in the cabinet. I've got a pile of books that need to go into the bookcase, so I should think I've got about 16 books that I need to find space in, in the bookcase, but there is absolutely no space in the bookcase. So we've got the closed cupboards that are in the, um, the alco alcoves in the front room, the lounge, and the big cupboard is absolutely chocker with books. They're so chocker that I'm putting books on top of the cabinet, which is supposed to be completely clear. I was even tempted to get like a storage container and put on top of the alcove cupboards and then put books in that. I, the problem is when I start being, I try to be really strict with the books and I think, well, why am I keeping my A-level books? And then I look through the A-level books and I remember learning about the subjects I think oh they're really good referral you know documents if I needed to if I was studying this or talking about this at work anymore it'd be really good to to use these books um my daughter might need these books and then sometimes I do a big sort through and say I've got two books which I'm happy to get rid of and then I just look at the two books and think oh well it's only two books I might as well just not get rid of any any and then I just put the two books back into the bookcase and I've also got the little bookcase in the hall, which is full of my travel books. And that is a complete mess and muddle and that needs to be sorted out as well. So I'm hoping that during the Easter holidays, I'll spend some time sorting through those. And I'll create enough space for these sort of 16, 17 books to go onto the bookcase. But that's created the space in the cabinet, which really should not be for books. Books need to go with books. That's what you've told me categorizing the things so that's what I'm trying to do there was also uh, some charity shop things that I've already mentioned and also some bin things so that was good uh, a couple of things that just don't belong in the dining room at all such as the greenhouse items and so this part of the video you'll watch me putting all the things back into the cupboard and then closing the cupboard up and I'm just left with the things that I need to sort out which actually belong somewhere else. 
I then clean underneath the cabinet. Now I think I, I did this with a dustbin and brush because it's really dusty. But what I actually also need to do is just get a damp cloth and wipe under there. Also, I was thinking about all these instruments. So I've got several instruments. Um, my husband does not want to get rid of the saxophone because he wants to start learning to play that again. But I've got one, two, three, four, five violin stroke violas. Um, and I'm so I'm selling the ones we don't use anymore because like there's one which is like an eighth size. So that was my daughter's first violin. And whilst I do have a connection because it's small and it's cute, it's not a particularly good instrument. It's just like a starter instrument. So I just think, well, you know, let's pass it on to somebody else who's learning the violin. Um, my daughter didn't play it that long, so it's not like she's got a big attachment to it. And I think she'd be quite pleased if I, you know, sell it for £40 or something. She'll be quite pleased to have that money in a bank account or that can go towards a new violin case which she needs. So I'll encourage her by saying there's no point us keeping it. I mean, even if she grew up and had children that played the violin, at that point, that instrument probably wouldn't really be considered good enough for a starter instrument. And the prices of these starter instruments just don't, don't hold. They're not like, you know, <clears throat> in, excuse me, instruments like German or French violin from the 1800s. Um, this is probably made in China. As I said, good for a starter instrument, but not something that you would actually cherish. So I wanted to give a quick update on some of my um, comments um, from my followers. Um, the last couple of um, days, I've been really lucky with the comments that you've made. Um, such nice comments and such great ideas. And I also need your ideas and your thoughts as to what I'm going to do when I go to Holland. Because um, I'm not going to have the content, am I? And then my channel will start stop growing. Um, I can't... Well, I suppose I could do some tidy up videos of our, of our apartment and where we're staying. And my mother and father-in-law will think I'm mad because they don't know anything about my channel. Yeah, so we've got a few new followers. So we've got um, Sisuti2561. Sorry if I've pronounced that wrong. Um, but she's from Sweden. So we've got one other Swedish follower. So that's great that we've got now a couple of people from Sweden. Uh, we've also got someone that just commented a little while ago to say that they're from Nova Scotia. That's interesting, that is, because I would straight away say that that's um, Latin-based. It sounds like New Scotland, but I had to Google to see where that was, and that's part of Canada, and looks absolutely beautiful. Um, we've had um, sort of a couple of updates from some of our... Um, regular followers and people who comment. So I'm pleased to say uh, that Polar the Dog has um, made a recovery. So Polar the Dog lives in the United States and had been really quite poorly. And um, like I said before, it's always so, so awful, isn't it? When um, a family pet, such as a dog or a cat, is unwell. I mean, I know how stressed and upset I was with our chickens and we're very close to the chickens, but, um, you know, a dog is some something that's, you know, an animal that's always there to greet you, to spend time with you, to go on walks. Um, so, yeah, Polar's made um, a recovery and hopefully that's going to be for, for, for a while. He's 10 years old, um, but at the moment he's doing quite well. So long may that continue, particularly when he has to come off this... Um, medication that he's on and then um Rani Mill Milliman um from Minnesota also said about how there's snow there so you know yesterday I was saying about all the different weather all over the world um in some parts of the world you have like you know lovely sunshine and then suddenly it's snowing again um well Rani said that I'm sorry if I've pronounced your name wrong you'll have to let me know how it's pronounced but said, yeah, no lunch on her patio today because uh, they got 10 inches of snow and they're expecting more. So sp spring is there officially, um, but the snow has arrived, but then they are experiencing drought-like conditions. So it's quite good, I guess, to get that sort of 
moisture into the soil that might help the rest of the rest of the um, springtime and into summer. Uh, a couple of people have made some really good comments about photos. You know, I was talking about people having photos, and someone said about how they'd got pictures of the, you know, from the zoo, loads and loads of photographs of the same animal. Someone else was saying they'd got loads and loads of photographs of the same river. Um, and yeah, when they went through, they just find that, yeah, there was lots of photos of similar things that you just don't need. And um, we've got a new subscriber from Maryland, which I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, I think is our first subscriber from Maryland. So that's exciting. And also, it was Karen's birthday yesterday. Um, and Karen's based in Canada. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Karen, happy birthday to you. So it's a day like Karen, but happy birthday. And everyone's wishing you a happy birthday from England and from all over the world in our little community. Um, and also got a really helpful comment from Sharon Mum. Um, she was saying how she looked forward to my videos each day and hearing about my plans and the things that I'm doing. Um, sorry I waffle sometimes, but um, yeah, she was saying that she enjoys that and that she was giving me some kind of good ideas in terms of locations of books, like if I've got cookery books and again, keeping all the cookery books in the same place. Sent very, very good idea. And also she was saying, because you know how I talk about how I keep different things for my daughter... She was saying about keeping them all in one place. And she's right, because I'll have like a bag which has got baby grows. I've got my new box, which has got some more recent clothes. I've got some other bits and pieces that I like to keep for her. And so she was saying about trying to keep them all in one place. And then you would see exactly what you have and how much I'm actually passing on. And then whether they're things that actually she'll want. Um, I have also got some good news you that I know a number of you are going to laugh about this so you know those shaving mug things that I've talked about over the course of the last few months from that bag that I put in my mum's loft when I was a little girl after my aunt died and the bag got given to me if you haven't if you don't know then if please have a little look back through my videos and you'll hear me talk about it so my mum bought this bag round so that was a bag of all things that I had decided to keep and that I wanted age 10 which I guess when you're 10, you don't make the best decisions or choices of the things that you want as an adult. And there were these two mugs that I, I should think I probably thought were quite collectible um, or antiques. Anyway, they've sat in my lounge for absolutely ages, not me not knowing what I'm going to do with them. And so I decided, with the different things that my dad had kindly been given me and thinking about me, that I'd give them to my dad. So yesterday, when we all went round my sister's for her birthday... I took him a few things around. So one was the music stand, which he's going to have a go at, see if, seeing if he can repair. Um, these two mugs and some coffee beans, which I thought he might want or know who, who they can be passed on to because we don't, my husband doesn't drink a caffeinated bean coffee. So um, I gave him the bag and he said, well, where are they from? I've never seen them before. I said, oh, they belong to one of your family members. I said, here's your challenge. You've got to try and work out which blood relative gave them, to uh, how I got them. And they're yours now. He knew instantly what they were because apparently he used to have one. So he thought long and hard, gave a few guesses and then said, I know. And he said the name of the family member. And um, I said, yes. He said, oh, well, he said, if I thought there was someone else's, I was going to give them to the charity shop. But I now, now I know that they're that person, I'm going to keep them. So I thought you'd all smile about that. So the, the, the shaving mugs have now got a new home. So can't you see the dust under here, how bad it is? I think I've, I've starved up a load of dust as well. So what I need to do is just get a damp cloth and just wipe under there and all the way round. And then, incredibly, I also managed to do some gardening. So I've been doing the edges, haven't I, like I did a few days ago. So you can see across there, my lavender has all gone a bit crazy. And there's lots of weeds and also self-set plants that I just need to tidy up. You can also see that my hedge desperately needs doing. Now, the hedge is not my job. 
the hedge is a job for my husband's. Um, I don't think it was done last year, so that's why it's looking a bit wild. But thankfully it's thinned out because my neighbour did their half. So we just literally, he just needs to cut hit this side. And obviously this is a good time of the year to do that. Just cut the side and cut the top. Um, it'll just make it look so much better. My mum t mentions that to me quite on a, quite a regular basis because for a while my husband couldn't cut it because the hedge cutter was broken, it had got a leak and my mum kindly took it to someone locally and had the leak repaired so now it does work but it's a big petrol cutter and it's really powerful but obviously when it's not working it's no good to anybody so it just needs to go along there, it's too heavy for me to even lift let alone actually cut the hedge. So I'd have to get out the old fashioned shears or whatever they're called. So yeah, I went along there and I before I used the cutters just to trim the lavender, but I just realized that I could just grab a section, just break it off because it's all so dry. So I did that to the lavender, did that to the daisies, also the lavender closer to the hedge. And then I went across the edge and managed to do quite a lot of weeding. So I sort of look back at this video and really see how much I managed to get done. Uh, I didn't do loads of time outside, but it was just nice to get a bit of sunshine, spend some time outside because it was quite mild. So the main jobs that I have for outside, um, I need to finish off the edges. So I've got to a certain point, but I need to do more right back towards the hedge. Also, the bit that I started the other day, I need to finish off. So I need to take that right up to the gate. Um, so I will do that over Easter. Then I need to start looking into the grass. So I mentioned the other day about how the grass is, it's got a lot of moss, it's got a lot of weeds. It's a shame because we put the turf down. Um, but I think over the years, sometimes it's been cut so short, that's then allowed the weeds and the moss to thrive. And then also we have got a liner under the stones and in places that's kind of warm through. So I also just need to rake the stones and just tidy that up. There are places where the stones are really thick and then places where they're nearly, you know, it's bare and you can see the plastic underneath and I hate that look. And then when I've got a bit more time and a bit more, because I find gardening very relaxing and very, very enjoyable, I shall weed the main beds. So I've got all the weeding to do with sort of the, the area around the outside of the grass. Um, you know, weed around some of my summer bulbs and just generally have a bit of a tidy up. But it definitely looks a lot better now. I've cut a lot of them, the dead growth back from last year. But of course, they're the jobs for the front garden and I've got the back garden that I need to do. So back garden grass, I need to do my herb area so we'll cut that back and sort that out since sort of winter time then i've got all my beds that need to be cut back um lots of new plants are coming through and it's getting that balance between not cutting back too early but also um tending to things as they come through so i always think the delphiniums uh, sometimes i cut back too late and then by the time they're grown up i can't put the support brackets around them so i need to make sure i do that and then i want to sort out my little area where my uh, benches and sort of the pots around there then I've got some concrete bits that need to be put in the bin because we're not going to build our little stream anytime soon which was the plan and also the oak tree with the oak wood that I got about a year ago that needs to be chopped up and then put in all the gaps that I've got in the wood shelter so I won't be cutting up the wood my husband will be doing that with the chainsaw I basically can't lift the chainsaw so I wouldn't even begin to start that and I certainly couldn't do it by hand that's like a massive job he's cut up a lot but the chainsaw has a limited battery life so he has to do that in stages cut up a load then recharge cut up a load and recharge and then we're also getting some prices for the back garden in terms of some new fence panels and the the replacement of the veranda so the veranda is almost as old as the house it was certainly put up in around the 1930s because I've got all those photographs from when Previous owners were sitting by the veranda, only on their photographs, that looks all fresh and brand new. Whereas for us, it is really looking a bit tired, to say the least. Um, I'm trying to get that done and, and avoid birds nesting under it. Because as soon as the pigeons start nesting, the wood pigeons, we won't be able to do anything with it. 
Um, so I'm hoping that something's done with that fairly soon. My husband just needs to measure up the sizes and then we can get a price um, for the wood and for like the plastic that goes on the top. We're probably going to paint the wood white so it matches in with the house, but we need to look at how it's going to be built because at the moment the main sort of horizontal pieces go into the house. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. Um, obviously part of the stability is because it goes into the into the house, into the wall, into the brickwork. So we need to look at that. But I do find gardening quite relaxing. I mean, I've, I've always been more of an outside person. So I can think back when, when we were at our previous house, um, I, we only had a really small garden, but I could just spend like the whole of a Sunday in the garden, just pottering around. Um, every single time, time and time again, I would choose to do weeding over tidying. So um, I think that's probably why, like I sort of keep on top of the garden and maintain things. Um, whereas obviously stuff with the house I have to constantly work at. I was quite pleased though because um, I've got this system now with my pots and those of you that like flowers at your door and you've got like spring flowering uh, bulbs and summer flowering bulbs it's a really good system. So I've now got quite a lot of um, pots that have different types of bulbs that flower all different times. So what I do is they sit down the end of the garden in my working area that you've seen before in some of my other videos and then as they then come up and about to flower, I then move them round to the front of the house. And then as like my pot of tete-a-tete -tete and um, hyacinths start dying back, I then put them round the, the back of the garden, the end of the garden, ready for next year. Um, and that's really nice because that then means that you've got pots like all through springtime. And I do really love spring. I sort of have a debate with myself as to whether I like spring best or summer. I love spring because it's kind of the signal that summer's on the way. Um, but yeah, I do really love spring flowers. And I've got some really light, I can't think what the name of them. They're not, um, they're not crocuses, uh, but they're like pale purple. You know what I'm like with plant names. I know a lot about plants, but I'm not very good with their actual Latin names or common names. Uh, but they've looked really nice. Yeah, so they're now fading and I'm going to move them round to the back. And because I often forget to water them, that's why I tasked my daughter with that job. So to do a weekly water. And she's been doing that. I think she quite enjoys that. So she's watering the plants in the pots in, by the front door. And then she's also watering my big cheese plants in the dining room on a weekly basis. So that seems to be working well. She gets one pound for the front watering and 50p for the dining room because there's only two plants to water in the dining room. But that just saves me from rem remembering to, to water them. They're quite close to the radiator. And you know how it is that when the radiators come in, they easily get dried out. So that's been working quite well. I'm afraid the washing job less well. So she did do that last week, but I had to keep asking her. So she lost some money because I had to keep asking. And also, when she took it upstairs, she put it all in one big pile and didn't split it into three piles. And then eventually when I got a pile, there were things all mixed in with it. So I had washcloths that needed to go into the kitchen. And obviously it's not an item of my clothing, a dishcloth um, that had been through the washing machine. And also I got some of my husband's clothes in my pile. So we did have a little laugh about it and just talk, you know, if this was a proper job, uh, you wouldn't be able to make little mistakes like that. But she is doing it, that's the main thing, and we will get there. So she got some pocket money for those, for that doing the washing, but she didn't get her full amount. Someone did say to you, I've, I've had mixed views. Someone said that it's too much pocket money, and other people said it's not enough. I mean, when I was her age, I was getting a pound a week from my mum for wiping up every other night, and then 20 pence from my dad. He used to always forget to give it to me and then by the time he owed me the 20 p's for each week he'd then give me a couple of pounds which is always good. He probably gave me extra as well but I didn't have to do anything for my 20 p a week. So she doesn't really have to do that much in the house so I'm just kind of going to keep on with it to ensure that she does do the jobs because I think it's important that everyone's contributes. I mean a number of you have commented on my posts about that that everyone needs to be allocated jobs and everybody needs to help around the house together.
and I, I, I agree with that approach. So this part of the video is nearly coming to an end. So I finish off outside and then I go indoors and hang the wet washing onto my airer. I still don't have a heated airer and many of you have told me about the benefits of that, so I am looking into that. I do have a dryer, but it's a washer dryer and it's just not as good as a dryer. And when I have used it, the towels still they're on for two hours and they come out a bit damp. And if I put like my t-shirts, they come out so screwed up, I then have to iron. And I don't iron, and I don't want to iron. So um, at the moment, the, the dryer option is not really feasible unless I want to start ironing everything. So I know a lot of you have got views about washing hanging around the house, but I'd rather have that at the moment than lots of things creased up. So you can see that um, all the things from the night before were dumped on the top there. Uh, just because I had to put them on the settee and I just hadn't had time to put everything on the dryer. So I'm just taking those off and then I'm shaking them and hanging them properly uh, to ensure they dry quicker. But also for the things that are kind of, you know, decent things as opposed to pyjamas, um, I need to make sure they don't get creased. I mean, most of my tops, to be honest, you just shake them a little bit. You don't even have to think anything about an iron. because, As you know, I don't iron at all. Um, and like my jeggings, you don't need to think about ironing. So they don't tend to be creased. A lot of the things that I wear, they just just shake them and they look absolutely fine. I'm sure some people who love ironing would have something to say and maybe look for creases. But it's just the type of clothing, I think. Some clothes, you just don't need to um, iron in the same way. And most of my husband's t-shirts, again, I shake them when they come out of the wash, stretch them and then fold them over. And they generally look presentable. The only time there's a problem is when everything's been shoved in his drawer and all got kind of screwed up in the process. Yeah, so I hang most of the things on there and then the remainder, like some bits of underwear and the odd t-shirt and tights, I then put on the radiator because we are still having the radiators come on every so often. They're actually on now as we speak, so it seems to be that it's like quite warm during the day, but then either when it rains or just when the um, sun goes down, it's still quite cold, so the heating is still clicking in. Hopefully not for much longer, given how expensive the energy is at the moment. I don't know if everybody across the world is experiencing this, but our bills in the United Kingdom um, are absolutely crazy how much people are spending on electricity. And the cap is going up. Um, meanwhile, the big companies, energy providers, are making millions um, it's shocking really because obviously they have shareholders they need to please the shareholders and they need to make a profit they are businesses because it's not part of the public sector but to keep on putting prices up when they're literally making record profits it just seems incredible and unethical and given that there are you know I'm lucky I work my husband works and we've got good jobs uh, but, you know, in many situations, it is a real struggle for people. Um, and at the same time, the council tax goes up. Water is probably going to go up fairly soon. The cost of shopping has gone up to a crazy amount. Um, it's more recently, I've sort of been trying to keep an eye on some of the prices, as opposed to just putting things in a shopping basket and not checking. Um, but, yes, yeah, some items, like things like tins of tuna, you know, it's like four tins of tuna is like four pounds something now. It's ridiculous. And something else I saw the other day, I just thought, goodness me, you know, a couple of years ago, that was like half that price. But maybe that's happening around the world. I think some of these places, they tune into, oh, cost of living crisis. Let's hike the prices up even more. And everybody will accept it because everyone's talking about a cost of living crisis. Bit of a, bit of a game there, bit of a con really. So yeah, I get that done, move that over. In the last part of my video, you'll see me quickly wrapping up my sister's birthday presents. And we had a lovely time at her house. Uh, we had fish and chips, and then my brother-in-law had made an absolutely delicious cake. Well, actually, he'd made two cakes because there was quite a few family members. So I had a massive slice of carrot cake, the lovely topping, and then little sort of like brownie bits on the top. Really, really nice. And it's the first time I've had a piece of my sister's birthday cake in years. Because normally 
I've given up everything for Lent. Sweets, chocolates, cakes, biscuits, ice creams, all desserts, crisps, coffee, drinks, all sorts. But this year I have only given up ice cream. And that was because I did that Daniel fast right at the beginning of the year. Um, yeah, so I was able to enjoy a lovely piece of birthday cake. Well, anyway, I feel like I've probably talked for long enough. I hope you're all well. I hope you've had a lovely day. Thank you again for all your support. And I appreciate your comments and you letting me know where you're all from. And I'll see you in the next video.